Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Carol Hinault, Executive Director of Reading is Fundamental of Southern California. Carol has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Carol, for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here. Reading is fundamental, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. So talk about how that mission statement that is encapsulated in the name of the organization finds expression in your organization? Everything we do, quite honestly, um, focuses on children and reading and books. We work with children who, believe it or not, have no books at home. Uh, the startling statistic is that two out of three low-income children don't have one age-appropriate book in their home. And the research that supports the importance of having books at home is uh, abundant. So our mission is to motivate children to read, promote literacy by providing new free books that children choose create home libraries and uh, allow them to have books at home to read for fun. And even in today's world where everything is moving toward electronic means, books are so important for young children. We're talking about the zero to five age range mm -hmm. where we as human beings, as animals, are very tactile. Mm -hmm. We're very visual. We care about the sounds and so on. It is not sufficient to simply have an electronic screen I don't uh, think so. looking at you. I don't think so at all. Um, when we interview the studies that I've read that interview parents, um, when they read to their children at night, um, they prefer real books. Um, there's a difference between holding a book, seeing a book, turning the pages. I have my book that I brought with me this morning. I carry my book everywhere that I go. I only read real books. I don't even own a Kindle. Um, there's something tactile. And caring for and, books. And, and absolutely. And I love, I love looking at my books. I love seeing my books. I love piles of books waiting for me to read. And it breaks my heart that there are so many children who don't have any books at home. The other thing that we need to be sensitive to is that when you have a low income, every single expense needs to be very carefully monitored. Without and it is doubt. not possible for a low income family to be dismissive of the cost of data streaming, of a electronic device, of telephone services. Mm -hmm. And so a book, once you have it in your hand, there are no additional costs. And no. particularly for a child where repetition of the same information, that ritualistic um, process of getting comfortable and, and uh, being able to read the thing that is familiar, that it might have been read a hundred times before, but you're reading it once again, and there's zero cost associated with that. All of that is really important for the vitality of a family because the money has to be used for other things. The importance of parents being involved in their children's literacy development, um, talking to their children. That's one of the biggest problems in many low-income disadvantaged families. Um, parents work long hours. They work more than one job. Uh, they're rushed. They're in a hurry. And they forget to talk to their children. And there is a statistic, which is absolutely true, that low-income kids enter school with a 30 million word deficit. That's not 30 million different words, that's just words that they have heard over their lifetime, up until they go to school. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that these children almost never catch up. So I always liken it to, let's say, you were sitting here and you were learning French. Mm -hmm. and I was speaking fluent French to you. And you understood every third word or something, but I'm just battling on in French, as a teacher does in English when children come into school. So I always ask people, what would you do? You would tune out on me. Right. It would be understandable. You, you, you can't understand me. So that's what happens to these poor children. They, they hear the teacher talking, they recognize a lot of the words, 
but they can't put them together into cohesion. Right. And that's where it starts. You're trying to deal with that at a very early age by putting books in, the ch in children's hands, by dealing with um, issues of, of uh, parents perhaps being um, uh, challenged in terms of their own mm -hmm. reading and their own mm -hmm. uh, language abilities. Mm -hmm. You're trying to even the playing field. The main program that we do is m the motivational reading program. Motivational, motivational reading, reading program. Reading so program. describe what that consists of. So uh, there are three main parts of it, three main goals of that program. So the first is um, volunteer effort. So we're going to be this year in probably 330 different sites throughout greater Los Angeles and Orange County. These are all low-income schools, community service programs, early Head Starts, Head Starts, state preschools, middle schools, we go up to grade eight from pre-K to grade eight. Each one of those sites has a coordinator right. that comes to visit our warehouse three times a year to choose the books that they think will excite the kids in their program in their school to read. So it's all a matter of choice. We choose the books that we can afford, that we think are the best books that we can put on our shelves. And the coordinators come from those communities. That's they, another very important they, aspect. The, they come from the communities and they know the children in their program. So this is not a question of people coming out with all well-intentioned but outside of those communities. No. This is about communities basically guiding the solution that works for them. Without a doubt. And, and the stories that I hear from them when they come to the warehouse, and, and we have all kinds of fiction and all kinds of nonfiction. We have nature and science and sports and history and biography and legends and, any, I mean, and popular titles, classic titles. And you're recognizing the different interests that individual children have, so it all starts with respect, doesn't it? Respect. It's respect for community, respect for, for uh, different sensibilities, different ethnicities, where you come from. Absolutely, absolutely. So this coordinator comes and half of them walk in and say, oh God, the kids are driving me crazy. They've been for a week. When do we get our next book? When do we get our next book? I mean, how beautiful is that? Because these are children who prior to receiving these free books really didn't know that there was such a thing as a book to read for fun. And your customers are demanding consumers. They are. They're they picky. are. <laughs> and they and they want then these are books to read for fun. They are to take home for a home library development and they're not for school. They can't be used for school. So the coordinators come in, they get a cart and a table and they walk around all the shelves. It's quite a large warehouse. We have hundreds and hundreds of different titles, piles, you know, displayed of different titles. And they walk around and they choose the books that they think will excite their Democracy kids Democracy and, and action. Absolutely. You have people from the community curating now content. A absolutely. They bring those books back to their school. And three times a year, the children get three books a year. Three times a year, they bring together parents. We had over 7,000 grassroots volunteers assisting this program last year. About over half of them were parents. They bring together parents and community and school to devise a motivational reading event that will get kids excited about books. We have costumes, you know, the big, uh, big red dog and Winnie the Pooh and Cat in the Hat that they can borrow to use in these events. The kids get totally jazzed and excited. At the end of that motivational reading event, while the parents are there seeing how excited their children are to be getting a book, the books are out on a table and without adult interference, the children walk around and choose the book that they want to keep to take home. I just love it when I used to go to events more. Um, um, the boys, a lot of them, you know, Ugh, I, don't, I, I don't really want this, I don't, I'm too cool for this. And they walk by the table and then all of a sudden you see their hand goes ka <laughs> <laughs> And they pull in a book. So 
these children, first of all, it's a brand new book. It's never been used by anybody else. And it's theirs. Big, big thing. Yes, and they own it. And there's a book plate in the front, and it says, a new book for my library. And they can write their name in that book. And they take it home. We have stories from coordinators that children walk around at their school for weeks with their books. They take them out to recess. They sit and read them. They share them. One couple of people have told me they're starting book clubs so that they can share their books. So it's all of a sudden an awareness of book, and so a lot of people can say, golly, you know, what difference could one book in a home make or three books over the course of a year? Talk a little bit about the impact. You have served a lot of children. We serve a, a range. Um, a, it averages out to about 60, 62, 65,000 children each year. And you've served about 1.6 one, million, one, 1 kids. million kids since 1972 when we were founded. Um, and what is your annual budget? About 600,000. You see, that's so amazing because sometimes impact comes with money and sometimes impact comes with, with modest resources like, like yours. Mm -hmm but huge, huge, huge community energy. We could not do this program, Mark, without community. Well, and the value of that energy and the value of that commitment of time and thought and mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, it, it's a multiplier. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, I'm the only full-time employee, and then I have three part-time people. We each serve a major role in our organization. We all carry this weight together. But if we didn't have this volunteer strength, there's no way that we could be in over 300 schools, community service projects. There's no way that we could make this program roll. You Carol know. Hanault, thank you so much for sharing the work of Reading is Fundamental in Southern California of the tremendous impact you have with such a modest budget, but so much energy from your volunteers yeah. and from your staff. And I just am very passionate, as you can tell. I just absolutely and thank love you. what I do. Thank you for your <laughs> insights on how to create this impact. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity.